Hello everyone. Welcome to Spring Boot tutorial series by GR Academy and uh, thanks for joining again. So in last tutorial we have seen overview of uh, general technologies that we gonna discuss for this database and uh, we're gonna start technical discussion from this tutorial. So this is tutorial 12 S2 with JDBC template and uh, in here we will discuss few topic first and then we will see the demo. So let's get started with this. First we need to create application or we can add S2 dependencies in our previous project. So let's go to our uh, uh, browser and uh, create a new project. To create project I'm gonna use start.spring.io. Uh, you can use your old project and uh, add S2 dependency and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, select S2. Uh, I'm giving name com.s2 and then demo and then I'm adding web dependency and then I'm adding S2 dependency and I'm creating the project. We downloaded the folder here and let me import it in my Eclipse. So I'm going in file, open project from file system, then directory and I'm going download folders and here demo. If I see select demo and open, it will detect as a Maven project and let me finish it. Here it created our project and if you open this pom.xml file, you can see all the dependencies here we choose as to. Now as I mentioned earlier that uh, we're gonna need JDBC template, uh, JDBC startup dependency, but I didn't add in our uh, start.spring.io uh, website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, go with another approach to add the dependency. So uh, I, I wanted to show this approach to you. So you can select dependency here and you can go here at add and here you can type JDBC and uh, it will show you the result but it is not showing here if you see. So uh, thing is you need to enable this feature in Eclipse. So let me cancel this and I'm going Eclipse and then preference and uh, here search for Maven. And if you select here, you can see here we have download repository index updates on startup. I select this and apply and close. So first time it's going to take a while, but uh, after that it is, it's going to be easy. So let me close this. Uh, so once it is finished, I'll come back. So our index uh, updating is uh, done. If you see here in process that is finished. And uh, now let me open my pom.xml. And I recommend you guys uh, close the Eclipse and restart it again. And if you see here, uh, we have this dependencies option. And uh, here I have this add button and I can search here JDBC like this. And it will show me the results such as uh, like this. And uh, here we need to add the starter JDBC dependency. Let me open this. And if you see here, we have multiple jar files. Let me select this first one and if I hit, if once I select it, you can see this group ID and artifact ID is filled automatic and this is the scope. Let it be the compile and uh, let me hit OK. And once I hit OK, you can see it is added here and if I go in my pom.xml, you can see it is here. And uh, one more thing about this S2 dependency that we added from our start.spring.io. And uh, the thing is, if you add this dependency from Maven repository, you will see scope as a test because S2 is actually a testing database. And uh, to use uh, for this tutorial, remove that uh, scope. And uh, by default, uh, once you remove it, Maven will take uh, default scope as a compiler and it will work perfectly. After adding dependencies, now understand one thing. Uh, here we're going to use JDBC template and uh, which will need a data source as a callback interface. Uh, but what is this data source? So data source is an factory that help us to get connection object to the physical connection and it is an alternative to driver manager in the JDBC. So normally with JDBC we have driver manager class and we normally call the get connection method on driver manager which will give us the connection object. But then why we need this data source? So the thing is establishing connection between database and application is a very resource intensive process and uh, every time we call get connection method of driver manager class we are establishing a new connection and at the end we are closing it once our uh, all the uh, work with the database is done and uh, internally Java is doing a lot of work for that such as using JVM sockets and security and many things like that. So 
Uh, for single threaded application this connection process is pretty straightforward but for multi-threaded environment it is very complex and in industry most of the applications are multi-threading uh, multi-threaded so in real life you will rarely see application without data source because data source can do connection pooling so what is this connection pooling so uh, thing is uh, getting connection and closing it when uh, when our work is done it, it it will happen in application server instead of our class so basically data source will have multiple connection objects already made and uh, ready to use so whenever you need them uh, you can call the get uh, connection method on a data source and it will provide and once your work is done it will go back to the pool for reuse so you can uh, it can it can save a lot of time and resources in terms of uh, performance and uh, that's why in most of the enterprise level application you will see this data source but to set up this data source, we need a few information initially and rest of the thing will happen behind the scene. So this information about database such as a database URL, we need a URL of the database. Then we need the name of the driver that we're going to use and we're going to need a username and password. So in Spring, we used to give this information via XML files. But in Spring Boot, we don't have that XML concept. So here, once we add our JDBC dependency at the application startup, our container will scan the project. And uh, while scanning, if it finds this JDBC jars, it will create data, uh, data source object as a part of auto configuration. And uh, for database related details, it will look into application.properties file. You can use Java, uh, Java configuration file also. But if we don't provide anything in database uh, in application or properties or Java config file, uh, it will create data source object, but it will create with default setting. And this default setting is for S2 database only. So if you are using database except S2, we have to set it up. Just keep it keep this in mind. And to set this uh, data source, we can uh, go with both the approach and uh, for application dot properties file approach, we have many common properties. So let me open up the link and. Uh, 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 let me show you which kind of properties we have and I will put this link into the description so you can use it. Let me search uh, data source here and uh, so if you see here we have many important properties such as data source name and uh, it is the name of the data source then uh, we have driver class name, we have username, we have password and then URL and there are a few some advanced configurations such as max active. So as I mentioned previously that uh, data source will create multiple connection objects. So this is the count of that multiple uh, connection objects. So if you don't uh, specify here, it will create 100 objects by default and uh, you can uh, change this based on the traffic of your application. And another one is max idle and min idle. So this is kind of if you don't have any traffic on your application, it will close unnecessary connection automatic. So let's say if you put a max idle 10, rest of the 90 will be closed. And additionally, if you see, we have a few more properties such as this initialize schema and data. So this is for initialization purpose. So thing is sometimes we have to initialize database at the time of application startup. So initialization means creating few tables or adding some raw data in it. And we can turn on and off this feature from this initialize property and uh, we can write a query in some pro other files and in schema and data we can uh, specify the location of the uh, files here. So at the application startup our container will scan these files and run those scripts into database and it will uh, it will create it will initialize the database basically. So schema is for creating tables, truncating tables or creating tables mainly for DD, DDL related uh, activities. DDL means data definition language and uh, data is to add data into those tables uh, mainly DML activities, uh, data manipulation activities. So don't worry about this DML and DDL if you don't know about it. We will discuss this in detail in our database series. But by default, those values are schema.sql and data.sql. Uh, we will look into this uh, soon. And uh, one more thing about this discussion is that uh, what is this S2 database basically? S2 is a lightweight Java database which is embedded with Java applications. And we don't need uh, anything external to use this. And uh, most of the time we can use this database for testing purpose. But this database is not for production. So if so if you shut down your application server, your data will be lost. So please never use this for actual application. One more thing uh, before this is uh, 
if you have if you are a little bit aware of any database we have uh, clients in there client like uh, database client is basically in software that uh, you can see visually what is happening in database you can see all the tables you can fire queries and stuff like that so we have a default client with this and uh, to see, uh, to see that we need to enable it and uh, for that we need couple of things first of all we need to uh, we need to have jdk not jre uh, i don't know why but uh, we need jdk for that but and uh, second thing is we have to enable it from our uh, uh, and the second thing we have to enable it from our code and for enable that i need to open this application dot properties file and here if you see i need to type spring and then h2 uh, here it is showing uh, suggestions also and the first one console enable and let me if i hit control and space it is it can it is showing me the possible uh, uh values here and i'm selecting true if i let me save it and uh, if i run this application as a spring boot and uh, it is starting so it started and let me go to my browser and here if i say localhost colon 8080 and type s2 console you can see that s2 console here like this and uh, by default we have jdbc url as a test but uh, we need to change it to mem mem is for memory and then we have test db so test db is the name of the database uh, which is uh, by default in the in our uh, spring and then username is sa and leave this password empty this is our basic default setting that uh, that is come with uh, our uh, spring so if i hit connect it is uh, starting our console and now you can see here we have database and stuff like that so uh, let me create one uh, table here and uh, for that i can fire a query such as uh, create create table and uh, let me give name employee and i can pass values such as ID and we have integer ID will be any kind of value but let me put integer for now and which will be not null and next I have first name and we have variable character and let me put this uh, variable character as 255 so it will be maximum length will be 255 characters which is also not null so this is for i'm just showing you how to write a query and stuff here if i run this you can see it is running but it is showing some error so let me fix that error first yeah i by mistake i put double comma yeah so you can see here it added this employee uh, table uh, with our uh, in our database and if i hit this select star from employee and if i run this it is showing the column but right now we don't have any data so it is not showing anything but you can uh, put stuff like this so uh, let me go back to my eclipse and if i stop this server and if i start this again you can see here uh, let me refresh this it will ask me again for login don't change any detail and just hit connect it will connect again and you can see here we don't have that employee table so as I mentioned earlier, this is an in-memory database and uh, this mem uh, we use is for uh, memory database and you can use here file, uh, you can use here test actually for file base but uh, for this tutorial it is not required but it is a memory database and uh, once I stop my server uh, all your data will be gone so that's why it is not recommended to use for production.